How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're having a battle versus Ty, also known as AG in game, in the Smogon overuse tier. Stick around till the end for a bonus battle and with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins, good luck, have fun Ty. So they're going to lead off with Squawkabilly, which is a fair enough, it's nice and shiny. We lead off with our Brookdish, so I could be a complete, oh no, the Intimidate, never mind. I was going to say I could be a complete baller and go for a Psychic Fang to get the KO straight away, but... Um, after the Intimidate, I don't think we do care when they can probably take us out of a Brave Bird because Bruxish is frail. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe or else Scrafty will come and destroy your Nintendo Switch. It's, it's that simple. So let's go for a Flip Turn. So Flip Turn comes through. A little bit of chip damage to the Squawk ability, not too much damage to be honest with you. But um, Bruxish has an Intimidate on it, so I didn't expect too much. Uh, so what can we go into against this Squawk ability? I'm leaning towards Corviknight. Um, Corviknight kind of walls the Squawk ability to be uh, fair, so... Um, let's go into Noctis real quick, like so. Bird versus bird. They go for a Tailwind. So I think we fought Ty before. He had a slightly different team then. Um, his team is definitely not OU. It's uh, under U OU, but it's, it's, it's like whatever. So uh, let's go for a slow U-turn, because why not? They withdraw Squawk Billy, which is great for us. It means we get a free U-turn off on whatever they bring in. And they're going to go into Rotom. So Rotom could definitely have taken a Brave Bird, so that makes sense. Um, going for a U-turn here is definitely going to be beneficial for us because it means we can bring something in to get rid of the Rotom. So there's a couple of things I'm not going to do here. One of them is not going to Scrafty. Um, I could go Iron Moth. Iron Moth could be really good here. We get that booster energy and speed. They can't really do anything to us. Could be really useful. Or, because they're Fridge Rotom, right? So they can have Blizzard. So we can't go Dragon Ball or Donphan. Not, not that I go with Donphan anyway. I think we have to go Iron Moth here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to Mothra.Bot. There we go. Pop that booster energy real quick, boosting our speed. And because of the booster energy and speed, we may actually outspeed the Rotom under the uh, trick uh, the Tailwind. So it's always a possibility. So let's go for a Fiery Dance first and foremost. They do withdraw the Rotom because they don't want to get smacked in the face with a Fiery Dance. And they don't want to risk out being outsped. So they go into Greninja, which is a very good one. Greninja definitely outspeeds us under the Tailwind, that's for sure. And um, so we go for a Fiery Dance. That's going to definitely do a lot of damage. Not really. Uh, just a bit. Oh yeah, we get um, I, we got boost energy and special attack, not speed. Sorry, I keep getting out confused. So anyway, this Greninja can definitely take us out, and we really don't want that. So I, I am going to go into Scrafty here, being specially defensive. Scrafty can definitely take care of a lot of that team, to be honest with you. A lot of that team, um, except for like the Embor. If we can get some bulk ups up, would be golden. So we get the Intimidate off, which doesn't really matter. They go for a Surf, which is going to turn them into a um, Water type because they are protein. And that's going to do a decent bit of damage, to be fair. Not too bad of a damage output right there. So I do kind of want to go straight for a Drain Punch or a Knockoff. I'm leaning towards the Knockoff. So the Tailwind does pair out. Let's go for the Knockoff because they are obviously a pure Water type now. Um, so it'll definitely KO. They go for another Surf. Maybe I should have gone for a Drain Punch to get some health back, actually. Um, we go for a Knockoff. That's going to do loads of damage to the Greninja. And we knock off their Choice spec. So now we know the next turn... Surf ain't going to KO us. So Scrafty can come through now and KO this Greninja no problem with the Drain Punch. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And um, they go for a Sludge Wave. I didn't even know Greninja got Sludge Wave. And that's not going to be able to KO us, unfortunately, for them. I'm guessing they were trying to get the uh, Poison, which makes sense. And um, that makes sense to go for the Poison there. So we get some health back. We KO the Greninja with Hoodlum Scrafty. <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that. Oh, well, whatever. So anyway... Scrafty's looking pretty good. In comes the Squawkabilly. They probably want to go for another Tailwind here. And I'd rather not let them do that. They do get the Intimidate off, so my uh, Scrafty does need to switch out here. Um, we could still use Scrafty. It should outspeed the Gudra. And uh, maybe not, actually. Um, it doesn't outspeed anything on that team, but um, we could potentially still use it later. Um, or we can go for a knockoff. I'm leaning towards the knockoff. I'm leaning towards the Drain Punch. I feel like they Tailwind, but if they go for a Brave Bird, they do Tailwind. So if they go for a Brave Bird, if they went for a Brave Bird and took us out, it's fine. But now we go for a Drain Punch, we're going to get some health back. Even though they got the Intimidate off on us, it's still going to do a nice little bit of chip damage to the Squawk ability. And we're going to get some health back as well as some uh, leftovers. So now we can freely use um, Scrafty however we want because we've got a bit more health back. So it can be used, for example to wall that Rotom. Not wall it, but go for a Drain Punch for super effective damage. So, I'm going to go back into Corviknight here, because we do have the Rocky Helmet, so if they go for a U-turn, then that's going to work out nicely for us, but they, I think it doesn't squawk where they get Parting Shot. They probably go for a Parting Shot, if that's the case. But we're Mirror Armor. They go for a Brave Bird, which is definitely not going to do much to Corviknight, that's for sure. 
They are going to get some mad recoil with the recoil from the move and the Rocky Helmet, which is always nice for us. Um, now I'm leaning towards a U-turn again. I'm going to go for a slow U-turn. They do withdraw the Squawk ability once again because they don't want to take a Brave Bird to the face and they can't do anything to us probably. And they're going to go into Rotom once again. So this is the perfect opportunity for us. So we don't know what set this Rotom is particularly. Um, they might be leftovers. They may be choice. They could be choice. That's always a possibility. Um, so let's go back into Scrafty. I know Scrafty can take a Blizzard no problem from this thing based on how much it took from a choice spec surf earlier. We get the Intimidate off, and the Intimidate on Scrafty could still be useful later on in the game against the Embor, against, um, well, the Embor, yeah, and the Squawk ability to an extent. So um, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to try and go for a Drain Punch. I think that's the way to go forward. They go for a Willow. So I was hoping there'd be a Choice Scarf variant or something like that that didn't have Willow Wisp, but you know what? It's fine. Scrafty's going to get burned, but we're still going to get some chip damage off, which is going to be great, and we get some health back as well. So. We do have leftovers, which kind of negates the burn damage, but at the same time, double-edged sword, burn negates the leftovers recovery. So that's uh, unfortunate, but at the same time, Scrafty's back looking a bit healthier now, which is always nice. Um, maybe I should put Shed Skin on this Scrafty, I don't know. I don't know. I really want to make Scrafty work, but they, this, this team is just not the way to go forward. So now, I want to knock off its um, item. I don't know what item it has, but I'm going to go for a knockoff now. So they go for a Volt Switch. We're going to get a free knockoff off on something. That Volt Switch does some decent damage, and they have got the Life Orb. We hadn't seen the Life Orb because they hadn't gone for an attacking move on us yet. Um, which is good to know the Life Orb. Interesting choice, though. Life Orb on Rotom Frost. Braviary comes in, and that is great for us because we went for a knockoff, so we can knock off whatever item it's got and get some super effective stab damage off, which is still going to do a decent chunk of damage, which it does. And um, We knock off the Life Orb, so I'm assuming the Sheer Force, um, which is bad because it means they're going to really, really hit my Scrafty hard here. But I'm going to preserve my Scrafty because we can still use it later on. Because it is still got the Intimidate, which could be useful against the Embor. If it comes down to Embor being the last Pokemon, for example. So, if we assume they're going to go for an Air Slash, we should go into Corviknight. But they could go for a Heat Wave. So, we have to be really careful with what, I do, what we do here. So, if I assume they're going to go for an Air Slash, I should go Corviknight. I think I will go Corviknight because I don't think they'll predict the Corviknight switch. I think they'll just go straight for the Air Slash to try and get, out, get rid of the Scrafty. I can't believe Scrafty is actually doing something pretty useful this game. It's not like super OP or anything, but it's doing something useful. So they go for an air slash. They do unfortunately miss, but that doesn't matter too much. He wouldn't have done much damage. As now, I'm assuming they're going to go for a heat wave. Um, so I should go into Brooksish and crunch this thing. I should. I think I will go into Brooksish because Brooksish does really well here. So we withdraw our Corviknights. And if we assume they're going to go for a heat wave, which they probably will. Brooksish is probably one of the best Pokemon to switch in. So they do go for an Esper Wing. That's going to do no damage. And it does boost their speed. So they're not Sheer Force. They were just straight up Life Orb. Fair enough. Let's go for a Crunch and take this thing out. There we go. Crunch comes through. It's Strong Jaw Boosted. It definitely takes out the Braviary. Brooksish once again. Showing why it's a pretty powerful Pokemon. They, they stayed in there because they didn't know we were Choice Scarfed. And they didn't realize that we were going to outspeed them with our Choice Scarf, even though they got the Esper Wing and KO the Crunch. Rotom comes in. Rotom's a good switch. It can burn us. Um, however, it does get outsped and possibly KO by the Crunch. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for the Crunch real quick. Brookstish may be MVP again, um, if this is the case, but I don't think it will be. We go for the Crunch. It might not actually KO. It does KO. Nice. So Rotom Hope Frost goes down. The reason I didn't think it had KO is because we're Choice Scarfed and it's not Stab. In comes the Squawk ability, which is cool. Squawk ability is a fine choice. Gets the Intimidate off, which is going to be useful for the uh, Brooksish, that's for sure. Um, now, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to switch out here. They, they probably know we're locked in. They could easily go into Embor, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm going to go for a Crunch anyway. And see what it does. They do stay in. Crunch comes through, takes out the Squawk ability. There we go. So Squawk ability goes down. Brooksish pulling in its weight again. You know, Brooksish is actually a really cool Pokemon with its strong durability and the Psychic Fang stab move. Pretty awesome. So, Gudra comes in. Very good choice because it can definitely take us out. I don't want to stay in against the Gudra. I kind of want to just sack off Scrafty. Or... Hmm. I think I will sack off Scrafty. That's probably the best place. So, we'll switch out. We'll go into Scrafty. There is a chance we live the Draco Meteor purely because we're, um... Especially defensive and we have really good defenses and stuff. So we get the Intimidate off. They could be physical as well. They go for a T-Bolt, which isn't going to take us out, unfortunately, for them. Um, and we do get that leftover recovery. But that is, uh, once again, negated by the burn. Um, so that is unfortunate. There is a chance we outspeed here as well, depending on what set they are. Um, it really is a chance that we can outspeed here and go for a knockoff. 
So that's what I'm going to do, just in case we do outspeed. But they, they do outspeed us. Go for a Thunderbolt, take out our oh, good old Scrafty. So Scrafty did pretty good. But, you know, it, it is what it is. So anyway, 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 anyway. What do we do here? I'm leaning towards Brooksish and just Psychic Fangs in the rest of their team. I think all they've got left is the M-Ball, right? And this thing. So Brooksish coming through once again. Let's go for a Psychic Fangs and see how much damage it does to Gudra. Psychic Fangs comes through. Clean to it, KO. They are gooey, though, which is good to know. And they go for a T-Ball, which should take out Brookstitch. So that's unfortunate that Brookstitch had to go down. But severely weakening the um, the uh, Gudra was pretty useful there. That's for sure, because now Dragapult can come in, or Iron Moth can come in and probably finish this thing off. So um, I want to go Corviknight, or I want to go Donphan. I think I'll go Donphan. I think I will go down fan. So in comes Michelin real quick. We just go for an EQ here. They actually have Surf on this thing, which is pretty cool. That's going to take us down a little bit. We go for an EQ though. That's going to definitely take out the Gudra from there as down it goes. So now we've just got the M-Ball to deal with, I believe. We took out that. We took out that. We took out that. Yeah, we took out everything except from the M-Ball. So M-Ball is coming through. M-Ball could, depending on the set, pull back here, which is good to know. Let's go for an Earthquake and we might outspeed. We might not. So they're going to terrestrialize. So they are finally going to terrestrialize and reveal what they're going to have. What type are they going to be, though? Are they going to be grass? Electric? Why electric? Why would you do that against the Don fan? Are they are they getting the time mixed up? I don't know. Um, they go for a drain punch, though. That's going to definitely nearly take us out. And unfortunately for them, they're going to get some Rocky Helmet chip before they take this earthquake to the face. They'd have been better off not terroring there. As that takes out the Embor anyway. Anyway, so I guess it didn't matter that they tear it because it would have still been weak to ground anyway. So Embor goes down and that is going to be the game. So GG titles are fun one. And um, that was a pretty fun one. I enjoyed that. Um, it's good to see the Scrafty putting in the work there. I know Brooks is putting more work with KO wise. But Scrafty did really well there. You know, it did its job. It did its job. And we have ourselves a bonus battle. Today we're battling versus Wimar from the Discord server in the OU tier. Wimar's also got a YouTube channel, so go check him out. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the teams you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Wimar. So they're going to lead off with Fan Fan, the former Titan. And that's that's pretty cool, the Great Tusk there. We lead off with Iron Moth. We're going to get that booster energy and special attack, which is going to be great. Making it so that we're an immediate threat to this Great Tusk. I was actually expecting them to lead with Pelipper. Um, to which I would have just gone for a sludge wave here, but I could just go for an energy ball I think I will just go straight for an energy ball here because we outspeed uh, Unless they're randomly choice scarf great tusk um, which I don't think they will be so we go for an energy ball They actually just stay in to take it. are they sash? They're not the great tusk goes down I think we actually just let off really well there because that that lead was pretty darn powerful against their team and um, Iron Moth actually does work against the team pretty well. So they probably go Pelipper here. Or they go Zamazenta as well. That's also an option. So Zamazenta comes in. It's nice and shiny. Gotta love it. Gets that Dauntless Shield. Now we do have the Dazzling Gleam, which we can hit him with now. Um, I am just going to stay in with the Iron Moth and just attack. They go for a Stone Edge though. That's going to take us out. So Iron Moth goes down. I did not expect the Stone Edge. It was a crit. I don't think it mattered though because it's still... A powerful rock type move against an Iron Moth. So that's unfortunate that we lost Iron Moth there, but it is what it is. So now what we can do is we could go Brooksish and go for a Psychic Fangs. Or we could drop a Draco with the Dragapult. I'm leaning towards dropping the Draco. Or we could go Corviknight. I'm, I'm leaning towards the Corviknight because it kind of forces a switch because they can't really touch it. Um, and then they have they lose their Dawn the Shield. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for a Brave Bird just to get the damage off. They do withdraw the Zamazenta. What are they going to go into though? Pelipper maybe? Uh, Gold Gen Joe. <laughs> that's going to be the Gold Gen Gold Go. Uh, we go for a Brave Bird. That's going to do no damage to the Gold Go, but it does potentially break a Sash. Um, and we get to see if they're leftovers or not as well, which it turns out they are leftovers. So we know it's probably going to be a Nasty Plot set, which means it might not have Thunderbolt um, for a start. So what I'm going to do here is I don't really have the best switching other than Scrafty potentially. If we assume they're going to go for a Shadow Ball or a um, Nasty Plot, we should go Scrafty. Scrafty's definitely the best Pokemon to go into here, so we'll bring Scrafty in. Like I said, especially defensive, it can take a Shadow Ball, it can definitely take a Thunderbolt. Especially with them being leftovers. We get the Intimidate off as well, none of it matters. And then they go for a Thunder Wave, which is fine. I don't mind Scrafty being Thunder Wave, it's not exactly particularly fast. Um, it's interesting seeing Thunder Wave on a Goldengo though, that's for sure. 
Um, so what do we do here? I'm leaning towards the um, Drain Punch or the Knockoff. Drain Punch predicting the Zamazenta to come in. Knockoff just so we can knock an item off of something. I think knocking off is going to be really useful. So they withdraw, and what are they going to go into, though? Are they going to go with the uh, Dauntless Shield Zamazenta again? Zamazenta comes in, the Pokemon fan. <laughs> I love it. Love it. So we go for a knockoff. We couldn't move because we were fully paralyzed, so they're keeping their item, whatever it may be. Probably leftovers, if I had to guess. They probably go for a body press here, so I'm going to go into Corviknight, get that Rocky Helmet chip, because why not? They actually make a double, and they're going to go back into Goldengo, right? Nigel. Who's Nigel. The Pelipper. Okay, Pelipper comes in, gets that Drizzle up, which is really unfortunate. And we are going to switch out our Scrafty, though. And now we have to deal with Ludicolo and Walking Wake in the rain. So Noctis comes back in. And what I'm going to do here is I don't have the best switch-ins to this at all. So I'm going to have to go for a slow U-turn. I will go for a slow U-turn here. They go... They out We outspeed them. Never mind. I didn't think Corv and I would outspeed Pelipper. I thought Pelipper had a little bit more speed than it, but it doesn't matter. We go for the U-turn. Now, what are we going to go into? Probably going to have to be the Dragapult, right? I think I will go Dragapult. Looking at that team, not a lot wants to take a Shadow Ball. That's for sure. So, let's go Dragapult like so. They do go for a U-turn. What are they going to go into, though? Are they going to go into the Ludicolo straight up? Probably, right? They probably go Ludicolo, or they go into the Zamazenta, maybe. Or the Walking Wake. It depends. Happy comes in. Who's Happy? Is that Ludicolo? It is the Ludicolo. So, that Swift Swim ability is outspeeding us. No problems there. We could tear a dragon, but they probably go for an ice beam anyway. Um, so what do we do here? I'm leaning towards the Scrafty, and I'm going to go with the Scrafty. Scrafty can definitely take any hit this Ludicolo wants to throw at us. Um, especially a non-stab ice beam. We can take that like a champ. So we'll go Scraftinator. There we go. Get the Intimidate off, not that it matters. And then they go for an ice beam, which is definitely going to do no damage to us. There we go. No damage. Um, they do lose some HP, so they are life orb, which is good to know. Um, but we are leftovers, so we're going to get some HP back this turn anyway. So Scrafty is doing pretty good stuff right now. We want to keep it around for the Goldengo, that's for sure. Um, so I am going to go for a knockoff here because I know I can take a Hydro Pump, no problem. They go for a Hydro Pump. And we do live that. We do live that. I say no problem. But we were fully paralyzed, so we can't knock off the Life Orb. So that is unfortunately going to be Scrafty's end. Um, so Scrafty didn't get to do anything this game. Pretty much. He got the Intimidate off on a couple of Pokemon that didn't didn't matter on. Let's go for a knockoff again just in case they miss the Hydro Pump, but they go for a Giga Drain anyway to recover some HP. So Giga Drain comes through, recovers them a tiny bit of HP, but it all adds up at the end of the day. Basically, give that recovered the life or recoil, so they they, they get um nothing off, so it's whatever. So anyway, happy, lost some HP. So let's go. What can we do here? I'm leaning towards. I'm leaning towards Don Fan. Earthquake Ice Shard combination. But no, they probably just go for a Giga Drain anyway. I'm leaning towards Corviknight. I think Corviknight can take a Hydro Pump, no problem. That's for sure. And then we can just go for a Brave Bird and KO this thing. So I'm going to go for the Brave Bird. They probably go for a Hydro Pump. We get the Ludicolo out of the way, and that is what's important. We've drawn Happy. What are they going to go into? Goldengo? Probably Goldengo, right? Crash Awake. That's going to be the Walking Wake, right? Yeah, Walking Wake comes in. That thing's a threat in the rain, no, no doubt about it. So we go for Brave Bird, it does some damage. Not too much damage, um, but enough to the point where I'm like, I can't switch in anything. So they have to go for a water type move here. Question is what, though? Are they choice specs as well? That's another question. Um, they may expect us to switch into something to take a water type move, like the Bruxish or the Dragapult, and they may go for a Draco Meteor or a Dragon Pulse. Um, I think Donphan ain't doing anything for us other than potentially walling that Zamazenta, but... It's just cell bait for iron defense, so I don't think we need Donphan anymore. If anything, we can just come in and go for an ice shard, which would be nice. Or if they go for a dragon move, or if the choice specs, for example, um, we can do something else. But they probably go for a, they go for a hydro steam. I couldn't really risk them going for any other move, you know. Um, so we get the sturdy, which is great, and then we can just go for an ice shard just to get a bit more chip on them. So there we go. Ice shard is there. Bit of chip, nothing too bad. They go for a hydro steam. And that is going to definitely KO the Donphan. So Donphan does go down. But we still have a chance here. Bruxish could pull through for us again. Bruxish could pull through for us. The rain does stop. So they may be inclined to go into Pelipper here. Ludicolo is still around. Let's go Bruxish. Let's go Bruxish. I think Bruxish can definitely take this thing on. And so we'll go into it. There we go. Let's go for a Psychic Fangs. I don't think they switch into Goldengo. That's for sure. 
They withdraw the Crash Awake. What are they going to go into? Probably Pelipper, right? Gold, Gold Genjo. The Gold Dingo. The Gold Dingo comes in. He's going to get some Psychic Fangs damage, which is doing nothing. Um, they are leftovers, of course, as we already know. I'm just thinking what to do here against the Gold Dingo. I, I want to go Corv because I'm expecting them to go for a Thunderbolt, though. That's the thing. But if they go for a Make It Rain and KO my Dragapult, then we're, we're in a bit of a pickle. I don't want to take unnecessary damage. I'm going to have to go into um, Dragapult. They probably go for a Shadow Ball, but I don't think it KOs. Um, so I think we're going to be all right here to go for a Shadow Ball of our own. So we'll go Dragapult like so. And uh, they do go for a Thunder Wave, which is really unfortunate. But I'm pretty sure Dragapult still outspeeds Goldengo with the uh, next hit. So let's let's see how this plays out for us. So they Thunder Waved the uh, Dragapult on the switching, which is unfortunate. And now we go for a Shadow Ball just to see if we can get the KO. I am pretty sure that we're out of speed still, but I could be wrong. They withdraw though, so we get a free Shadow Ball off on something. Can it be the Pelipper? Nigel, that's the Pelipper, right? Yes, it is the Pelipper. Gets the Drizzler once again, which is very threatening to us. We go for a Shadow Ball. We don't get fully paralyzed, which is nice, unlike the Scrafty. And that Shadow Ball is enough to de definitely 2 KO with the Pelipper, so that's great. Go for another Shadow Ball. We should outspeed here if they are defensive, which they might be. We couldn't move because we were fully paralyzed, which is really annoying. And then they go for a knockoff, knocking off our choice specs. So now at least we can switch up moves. Every cloud has a silver lining and all that. Let's go for a Shadow Ball again because we do outspeed. Shadow Ball comes through. Pelipper does go down, which is fantastic. But I'm pretty sure Ludicolo wins the game for them here. And um, because we can't hard switch into Ludicolo, that's for sure. So in comes Happy, the uh, Ludicolo once again. We know it's Life Orb, we know it outspeeds us. We could tear a dragon with the Corviknight when we bring it in to take out the Ludicolo. I guess I drop a Draco here all the time. But they terrestrialize, so what type are they going to terrestrialize into though? Something to take a dragon type move, maybe. Ice? Terra Water. Okay, they're going Terra Water right now. Interesting choice. That means that they're no longer weak to Brave Bird. They go for the Hydro Pump in the rain. Life Orb boosted. Terrestrialization boosted. Takes out the Dragapult in one clean hit. So Dragapult does go down there, which is very unfortunate for us. Um, but at the same time, it's like, whatever. So let's go Corviknight. Go Corviknight. Corviknight comes in. My only chance of taking this Hydro Pump is if I Terra. So I have to Terra right now. And go straight for a Brave Bird. Pretty much. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to Terrestrialize real quick with Corviknight. I am Dragon just so that I can be neutral to... No, so that I can be resistant to Electric and Fire. But also still neutral to like... You know, other things. So... Like fighting and stuff like that, or, you know, because when you tear a water, you're still weak to electricity, for example. They go for a Hydro Pump, though. It's not going to KO my Corviknight, I don't think. I hope not. Still does a lot of damage, though. That's a lot of damage. But after the Life Orb recoil, this Brave Bird should finish off the Ludicolo. Like so. Oh, it just barely holds on. Barely holds on. So I... That's annoying. So let's go for a U-turn here, just in case. They go for a Giga Drain, that's going to KO us. So they're going to lose... They're going to lose enough health, I hope, from the Life Orb. But yeah, they do lose enough health from the Life Orb to where they get taken out. So Noctis goes down, but it's not in vain, as the Ludicolo will take itself out of a Life Orb right now. I hope. Yeah, it does. There we go. So that's, that's good. The Ludicolo goes down. Happy goes down. Happy is now sad. Definitely sad, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, let's see how this plays out. So let's go into Bruxish. So Bruxish is a good one. So they're going to go Crash Awake. Now Crash Awake is an interesting choice here because Bruxish can definitely outspeed and KO this thing with Psychic Fangs. Problem is we've got the Goldengo to deal with. But that, all that seems to be able to do with Bruxish is um, Thunder Wavers because they went for a Thunder Wave earlier. So do we go for a win? No, we go for a Psychic Fangs. We have to go for a Psychic Fangs here. So we go for a Psychic Fangs. Takes out the Walking Weight, no problem. Um, Zamazenta could go down to a Psychic Fangs, but I think it does live one because it's just that bulky. In comes the Gold Dengo, which is great. They know they know that we're Scarf now, 100 billion percent, because we outsped the Walking Wake. 
Let's go for a Psychic Fangs real quick. There we go. Psychic Fangs comes through. No damage. I would guess. They go for a Thunder Wave though. That means we no longer outspeed the Zamazenta. But do they not have a move like Shadow Ball that can KO my Bruxish? The rain is going to stop, which is fine. It doesn't really matter. But do they not have anything to KO Bruxish with Goldengo? They might not. Let's see. Let's go for a Psychic Fangs again. We do have speed, of course. No damage. We could flinch them, though. I don't think it flinches, actually. And they go for a Hex. The Hex. That's why they go for a Thunder Wave first. Hex takes us out. And that's going to be the game. So GG one more. That was a pretty fun one. Um, a great final game for this team with Scrafty and Bruxish on it. So once again, I, I'm still debating who the MVP would be here or who the thumbnail Pokemon will be, but uh, GG one more. That was a pretty fun one. I enjoyed that. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all the wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.